Oh man. Once I was working in a government organization. Uh, <laughs> I was working at a place that shall remain nameless that had this like health hazard that was a gas canister in a storage locker that was not well secured. And every week someone would raise the issue that this gas canister has not been well secured. And then we somehow wouldn't get ownership on who was going to fix the problem. And we would go, yeah, we're really bad at fixing this problem. And then the next week it would still be the same problem. And this went on literally for two years. Like no one just fixed the problem, including me. It still baffles me <laughs> how we did that. Uh, but we did. And this happens all over the show, like where we call out problems, but then we don't finish by actually committing to what we're going to do to solve them. Theoretically in Agile, we say what we're going to do at the beginning of the week and we commit to time. And so we get all of that done at the end of the week. In the real world, that doesn't always happen. It's the goal, but we don't always reach the goal. So what we have is these things called retrospectives, which are where we are constantly focusing on at the end of our week, our progress, our process, how are we doing and how can we improve so that next week we're more accurate and faster. If sprints are about looking forward and committing to what you do, retros are about looking back and learning from what you did. The point is that if you learn, you will be better next week, next Monday, your sprint will be even more accurate, even more useful. So if I'm facilitating a retro, I want to make sure that everyone's in the room on time and that they're ready to share their honest feedback. So the first step we're going to do is look at what we did. So we'll do a showcase, which means we'll actually look at the thing we built. So say for example, if we built a web page with a buy coffee button, we'd get on the page and we'd click the things and we'd go through the process of buying the coffee. And then we'd give ourselves a round of applause, maybe celebrate with a coffee. Um, uh, and then we'd look at what we did in terms of the cards. So then we look at here is the backlog and here is the status of all the cards. And hopefully all of our cards are in the done column. If not all our cards are in the done column by the end of the week, then we've not theoretically achieved what we need to do. We have an opportunity to improve. So it's not about saving up all your feedback until the end of the week, right? If you've got an issue with someone or if you see an improvement, call it out whenever. It's about really taking the time to reflect. So what I would usually do is get people all in the room and get them to just write down what they learned in the week I use a really handy method in retrospectives called stop, start, continue. It's a bit like a stand up in that we'll go around in a circle and each person will call out something for the team that they would like us to stop doing, something they would like us to start doing and something they would like us to continue doing. This will often be about how the team is working together. So say for example this week I've been struggling with our stand ups. I might decide to focus on stand-ups for my stop, start, continue. And I want to say, I want to see us stop turning up late to stand-ups, and specifically I mean you. <laughs> I, I want to see us start to really um, call out in 10 words or less what the blocker is, and I want to see us continue using the timer because I think that's really helping us stay on track. So for me, this week's retrospective, what I learned is that we can improve the way we're doing stand-ups. And if we do those three things, I think we'll really get there. I choose to go around the circle because it's really important that everyone is heard. It's really important that everyone gets a voice and everyone has an opportunity to say where we can do better and where we're doing well. A retro takes as long as it needs to take to get to the root cause of problems. So if it was a really easy week and there's no dramas, everyone can quickly run through in a couple of minutes what they learn and then we can move forward. If it was a really challenging week, then we might need to ask some deep questions of ourselves about why are things going the way they're going and how can we improve as a team? And this 
could even take an hour or a couple of hours if it's you know, a really painful time. At the end of this, we want to work out with a clear sense that we've learnt from the week previous, that we've completed something, and then when we come back next week, we're going to have a fresh week with a fresh sprint. So remembering that at every step of the way with each card, I want to be getting as much feedback from users as possible. And also at the end of the week, if I've built you know, a journey through a website or stuff like that, I'm going to showcase that. I'm going to play back what it is. And ideally, that would be an opportunity to bring in your users or your customers and show that, get them to show you how they're using this thing. Great example could be, say if we've already done some testing and we've already asked a user to run through the website, we could play back that as a video of the screen, screen grabs of that. That's really cool because you can really see the impact it's having and continue to get that feedback across all the team. A lot of the work on being an Agile coach or leading an Agile team is about creating the right feeling in the room. It's about coaching and training everyone inside and outside the meeting so that when we're together, everyone gets heard. Usually everyone has an equal voice and the things they're saying are really relevant to progressing the project. So what I try to do to make sure that everyone gets an equal say is this literal thing of taking turns. Um, in a retro, I won't put a timer on people like I will in a stand-up, but I will be very specific, especially if I know they tend to dominate the conversation, I will ask very specific questions. And sometimes I will say to people, and I need you to give me this answer in less than 25 seconds. One of the rules that I often create in a retrospective as well is that it's okay to have some silence. It's okay to have some thinking time. Often you'll find that when there's a group conversation, the same people keep jumping in and jumping in and jumping in with their opinions. And so I will often leave an uncomfortable amount of silence with a question and often tell some people they can't answer the question so that those more quieter voices get heard. And you can be really explicit about that. You can say, so and so and so and so, you've talked a lot in this meeting, I'm gonna pose a question to the rest of the room and I don't want you guys to respond. Okay, so, so you three here, you haven't talked as much. So I want your reflection on this question and I'm just gonna sit here and wait until you're ready to have a think about it and share some time because it takes some people time to think and actually, you really want to hear more from those people who take time to think before they say something. In a normal situation, what usually happens with project meetings is they're completely isolated from the business, right? From the people who are doing the actual work. So the project team goes away, they have all these separate meetings, and then maybe there's like a memo emailed of the minutes, and no one reads it. In Agile, the idea is that the people who are really touched by the process are included in the process. So when I was working at Spelled Victoria, there were only like five permanent staff members. And so I made sure that in our IT project meetings, all permanent staff members were invited. And so that meant that Maureen, who was on our front desk as receptionist, was invited, she was included. And it was awesome because our projects were often about how are we communicating better, supporting better our families that we were serving. And Maureen was the one dealing with them day in, day out. So the best ideas came from our receptionists. They came from Maureen. They did not come from like me, the operations manager or the IT people. They came from her. Every retro she would get to tell us what's working and what's not working from our new process because she would see that and be having those conversations with the families. So the people who are really touching your customers, the people who are really touched by the process, they need to be in there in the retros. And a well-run retro will make sure that their voices get heard. Now, Maureen didn't see herself at that time as like um, a big manager type or anything like that. So making sure that she got a say 
and that everyone listened to her opinion, which was actually the most valuable, meant that she had the courage to speak up, which she wouldn't ordinarily have done. In a good retro, people are usually really, really proud of the work they've done that week. I used to have this method that we just use post-it notes on a wall and then I had a big envelope spike and at the end of the week people would pick up their post-it notes from the done column, explain what it was, anything they learnt and then <laughs> spike it. It was very satisfying. I mean I was a weird kid at primary school so I didn't really fit into my normal Catholic school. And so thankfully my parents decided to send me to a Montessori school. Now it's an alternative education and so Montessori basically works like Agile. On Monday morning my teacher would get me to stand in front of her whiteboard and she'd say what are you going to get done this week? I'd write it up there and so I wouldn't have any homework, the onus was just on me to get that done. And then on Friday I would come back and everyone would sit in a circle and I'd say Here's the map I coloured in, and yes, I did read this book, and yes, I did do this lesson on fractions. So I remember going from like this traditional classroom experience where I wouldn't know what we were going to do the next hour. I wouldn't know what we were going to do after lunch. Um, and really feeling quite powerless to then at the age of nine getting up there and saying, I'm going to do this, this and this and um, feeling quite a strong sense of pride and I certainly felt more committed to my work. So I love that and it's true that there would be some Friday lunch times that I would hide in the toilet because I hadn't done my work. But I didn't get in trouble and so I didn't really have to worry about that and actually although I'm not perfect and sometimes I still want to avoid the conversation when I haven't done what I said I'd do, rather than spending heaps of time feeling like I'm a bad human being or a naughty, naughty, naughty child. Um, mostly I have a sense that it will be okay and we just need to fix the problem. When a retro is working really well, everyone walks away with a sense of achievement, with a sense of completion of the week and with a sense of we're just going to get even better next week.